you all came. There's my mic. OK. Um, how many of you all have been to Burning Man before? Raise your hand. All right. How many is this, are you going to go for the first year? Cool. How many of you have been to Burning Man before, have cooked at Burning Man? OK. So this will be nice and educational for everybody. Um, you know, it's not easy. Uh, you know, it's a little bit different from regular camping. So um, my name is Mirit Cohen. I'm a sous chef, newly sous chef at Cafe 150. I was at Cafe 5 and Charlie's and catering. And, and I'm Mike Welpley. I work at Charlie's Cafe doing admin stuff, all those menus and uh, everything else. So uh, today, okay. uh, we're going to split this into two parts. I'm going to cover the hardware issues, basically setting up your cooking space and the equipment you need. And Chef Marie here is going to cover <laughs> all the software issues, basically, all your food, how you cook it. So uh, let's get started. What's different out there? <laughs> a lot of things are different. But mainly with regards to cooking, a uh, number of factors you have to consider. The heat. It gets hot during the day. Temperatures up to, what, 110? Somewhere around there. Uh, it will spoil foods really fast if you're not prepared. The dust. The dust just blows everywhere, gets in everything. You got to protect your food. You got to protect your living space, unless you want to eat more dust than you usually do. Mm. You got no electricity, unless, of course, you bring a generator. But that's a whole other set of problems. We're going to assume, for the most part, you don't have electricity. No running water. Same idea. You got to bring everything in. And on, there's also the opposite end of things. When you dump your water, you have to save it. And once you wash out things, it's contaminated, and you're just not allowed to dump it on the playa. So you got to keep up uh, gray water, which is uh, we're going to cover that later. Pack in, pack out, the general ethic of the thing. You got to bring everything you need, and you got to take out all the trash you make. And time constraints. You do not want to be spending all day cooking in your kitchen. There's so many other fun things to do. But you still want to put in enough time to eat well. So. What do you need to set up your kitchen? First of all, protection against the dust. You need some sort of shelter, a tent, the truck. Uh, the two main options are a carport. It's a thing they sell at a Costco and a number of other places. It's basically a giant tent for your car. It's, uh, they're cheap. They're great, easy to set up. You just got to remember to secure them properly. Uh, last year, uh, was anyone around last year? Do you remember the dust storm on Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah, uh, some of our stuff went flying, and uh, one of our poles crashed through the windshield of a neighboring camp's van. That was uh, not fun. Uh, safety, same idea. Secure everything, and uh, make sure you're prepared in case of fire. Fire extinguishers are very important. Otherwise, it's just your basic kitchen needs. You need some area to chop up your stuff, prep up your stuff, cook it. You need storage zone to uh, keep everything in order. And uh, seating, it's good. Because you, if you're cooking for a group of people, you all want to sit together, have some dinner. So I'm going to show you uh, how my camp uh, set up its kitchen last year. It's called You Are That Pig. Uh, we had a pretty good operation going. We were feeding 50 people for the whole week, actually nine days, because we were there early. And uh, I'll just show you how it's done. Uh, this is a shot from inside our kitchen. Um, first thing I want to point out is the utter mess in all these shots. <laughs> this was taken about Thursday or Friday, and uh, it's just an inevitable fact of life there that it's utter chaos. So uh, the more you prepare, the better organized you are at the start, the less headaches you'll have later. Uh, specifically pointing out, we have a nice little uh, picnic bench table, some benches, and uh, a pantry set up. Just basically milk crates all uh, wired together. And uh, we found these old cabinets that were pretty useful as other food storage. Uh, this is a shot of our prep area. Uh, some things to note here, uh, basically our prep tables. A special little thing we have, it was a propane-powered refrigerator. Uh, we don't expect you to find any, uh, but if you can get your hands on one, they're, oh, they're so good. <laughs> uh, it took basically a one uh, five-gallon tank of propane for the whole week, so. As long as you watch yourself, like don't open it too much. Same thing applies to coolers. Just only open them when you need them. Otherwise, you're going to be letting in heat unnecessarily. Uh, we also have our kitchen sink uh, set up here. Uh, we have a detailed shot after that. 
Uh, this is our kitchen sink. Um, basically a table with a hole cut out in it, uh, a little pot here. That drains down to a large 50 gallon bucket in which our gray water was collected. All the nasty food particles and soap and stuff you just don't want dumping out. Uh, we got this pump bucket that allowed a pretty high pressure spray that made dishes, uh, clean dishes pretty early. Oh, so I should note, uh, please clean your pots and pans and dishes as soon as possible because the dry environment makes things very crusty and hard very quickly. So I, it's just a little bit of work, but it'll save you a lot more down the line. And uh, going back here, uh, this is another shot of our prep table. And uh, this is what we mainly use our burner, just your standard camp stove. Some other options I'll be talking about later. Uh, we put together a chore list. It's pretty essential when you have a lot of people and you don't know who's going to do what work. You can't really assign these things beforehand because, again, you don't know where people are going to be. So we just had a list and people filled in their names as they felt that it was necessary to volunteer. Various tasks like prep, cooking, cleanup, everything else. This is what we use for our garbage collection. Uh, we set up a little wooden frame with uh, six large trash cans underneath. And you can't really read it from here, but they're labeled trash, plastics, aluminum, glass, plutonium, and burnables. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it's good to separate it out because uh, there's a number of, you know, plutonium is very dangerous. <laughs> and otherwise, you're going to have to be sorting through them later. Uh, specifically, uh, the cans you want to separate out because those you can dispose of on Playa. There is a uh, specific camp that does that. Other recyclables you have to take with you. Uh, what's not pictured here is a little innovation we came up called the drying rack. We're not sure if we were the first to think of it. <laughs> Basically, you take two uh, screens with wooden frames. You put two hinges on one side and a latch on the other. You put any wet food scraps, like melon rinds or mostly vegetable scraps, put them in there. You put them in the morning. By uh, afternoon, it's going to be completely desiccated, lost a lot of the weight. It'll be easier to pack out. And it's not going to be rotting in your trash can all day. Uh, this is our evaporation pool. Pretty essential. I mean, you have to have one if you want to shower. But we also set one up underneath our coolers, because we noticed there's like a, th there can be leakage problems if you have some old coolers. And DPW really hates you if they discover a giant pool of water leaking out from under your kitchen tent. What's and, DPW? Oh, Department of Public Works. Uh, those are the, if you're not familiar, they are uh, dangerous folks. The people <laughs> who uh, clean up all your stuff the week after and... Uh, they build Burning Man, so... Yeah. You know, before all this happens, it's just playa, just what you see on the ground. That's it. There's nothing there. There's no plants. There's no mountains. There's no nothing. So they build, <laughs> they build a city, which becomes the third largest city in Nevada for the week. So they're kind of particular about what you do to their city. And then they clean up after you. So there's a little nice sense of ownership of the place. So. Be nice to them. Give them gifts. Yeah. Bribe them. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's just start covering the hardware, what you need to bring. Um, I'm just going to cover in general because Basically, bring everything you need to make your meals that you're planning. There's no real need to bring just everything in your kitchen because it's just too much stuff to bring. So basically, you, you're going to need your cooking implements, your pots, your pans, your spatulas, tongs, everything else. What you need to physically put stuff on the heat. You need the heat itself. Uh, grills are nice if you uh, have the space and capacity to bring them because they're great for all sorts of summer cooking. They cook things fast. Uh, burners, pretty much essential because, you know, you're cooking your rice, yeah. chili, anything else you want to cook on a table, have to have it. There's some other options we're going to cover later, too. Uh, coolers, again, very essential. Uh, some things to keep in mind. Uh, I did mention that you shouldn't open them as much as possible. Also, you need to label them. So you don't have to open them. Exactly. <laughs> You can, it helps to separate them out, like, this is the meal cooler, this is our drinks cooler, this is our snacks cooler, and you know, don't open this till this date. Also, and also, um, ice runs, they, they don't sell anything on the playa except for ice and coffee, two essentials of life. Um, so 
don't forget to re-ice the coolers. Like by Wednesday, you're totally you know, conked out and you just forget everything in there is going to go bad. So if you have something that's been there since the beginning, don't, don't forget to spill out the nasty water and put new ice in there. So. Yes. Uh, your prep equipment, uh, just basically knives and boards and bowls that you, know, you mix everything up in and chop it all up. Oh, knives specifically. Uh, does anyone own uh, really fancy knives? Anyone? <laughs> I, I really wouldn't recommend bringing them. A <laughs> uh, better option, uh, you go to a kitchen supply store. I'd also recommend getting most everything else you need there. Don't, places like Sir La Table and Pot Pottery Barn, they're great for pretty things to have around your kitchen. And they, they do sell good stuff, but it's not the stuff you want to bring out here. Restaurant supply stores, they're, they're all about the utility. They're just, it's tough stuff. Uh, and they also sell these stamp knives that run around like $10 to $20. They're pretty good. They'll last you a week, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Same idea, you need your, your serving utensils, uh, your platters, your bowls, your spoons. Bring some extra in case you get some extra guests or people forget theirs because everybody forgets theirs. Uh, storage. You want to put all your, you want to minimize the packaging that you bring because otherwise it just creates more trash. It really helps beforehand to repack everything and, um, in more convenient containers. Tupperware and all the Im imitators are very useful because it seals against the dust. Cartons, milk crates, those are great for uh, perishables that you want to breathe. Uh, sink and washing. You can set up a, a little sink like uh, we showed you before. Another option is just having a bucket. You do your washing in there, and then you put it in your, in your evaporation pool later, or into another bucket. And last, but certainly not least, fire suppression. You should always, 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 in any kitchen where you're using a flame, heat, any type, have a fire extinguisher, please. OK, uh, dealing with the garbage, like I said, um, already covered, consolidate your packaging. Less in, less out. Uh, there's two types of recyclables. Uh, the, again, like I mentioned, uh, Burning Man only takes cans. Everything else, you're going to have to pack out. Dry garbage, again, keep it separate. Uh, you can put the stuff you dried out in your drying rack in the dry garbage. Your wet, nasty compost, your wastewater, and drying racks. And like I mentioned before, secure those cans. You don't want them toppling over. Make sure they have a lid. So uh, I'm just going to sum up with some favorite little bits of equipment. This thing is called a cassette foo. Uh, it's pretty standard in the catering industry. If you're looking for a new stove, I actually would not recommend those large, bulky camp stoves. These things are much cheaper, much lighter. They run off these little cartridges of fuel that are actually pretty cheap. Um, and they're just very convenient. They pack up in a little suitcase like this. My favorite of all cookware the cast iron pan. Does anyone own one of these? All right. Good people. <laughs> uh, if you're getting a new one, remember to follow the seasoning instructions. Basically, you have to oil it, put it in a hot oven until it forms a nice coat. Uh, these are great out there because you don't need soap to clean them. All you have to do is sprinkle some uh, kosher salt, rub it with a paper towel, put another layer of oil on it, you're done. Uh, they withstand so much abuse, and th they still love you. I love them. They won't go flying away either. <laughs> oh, and also, it's great for cooking itself, too, because uh, they're thick, they're heavy, they retain a lot of heat. So dishes where you want to get a nice sear on something, like any sort of meat, you grill on a steak, some chicken, uh, this is going to do a much better job than any of those like, thin little flimsy pans you might have lying around. Uh, the French press. <laughs> uh, my favorite method of making coffee. Uh, some people are fans of the, the drip pot method, where you can get a little filter or a drip pot and uh, just pour your hot water over. But this is great, too. You just put your, have some pre-ground coffee and uh, put it in. It's also good for tea. This is if you want to get a little bit extravagant. <laughs> uh, it's called a uh, soda siphon. It runs off a CO2 cartridge, and it just puts out fresh seltzer. Uh, it's great for just you know those exotic little bubbly drinks. It's a fun little luxury to have. Blenders. Uh, this is only if you have a generator, obviously. Uh, those are great, not just for your standard margaritas and ice drinks, but for soups, too. Gazpacho is uh, 
lovely out there. And also, if you have electricity, this is great, uh, the crock pot. So many slow cook dishes, you, it just involves uh, combine a number of items, put it in there, wait a bit, wait about eight hours. Uh, and you know, no hassle, good deal. So I believe that ties up my end of the hardware. I'm going to pass it on to Marie to cover uh, food issues. All right. So um, we'll have a little time for questions afterwards in case you guys are wondering. Um, so food. What do you need to eat when you're out there? This is really, really important. It could may, may mean the difference between a good experience on the playa and a very, very bad experience on the playa. You are responsible for taking care of yourself out there. Nobody else will. So make sure in this hot weather, active lifestyle, that you have light, fresh food, lots of water. Um, they recommend bringing two and a half gallons per person per day for all of your needs, washing your, yourself, your pots and pans, and cooking. Um, low volume, less is more. Make sure that what you bring is nutrient dense. Um, power bar bars and stuff like that are good, but there's other kinds of things I'll talk about in a minute. And spicy is good. You just will we'll like it out there. It's hot. Think about you know hot oh, climates. Uh, yeah. In Chinese medicine, it's well known that spicy foods bring your heat to the surface. So initially you feel hot, but then you actually cool down. OK, there you go. Um, <laughs> and balance, starches, veggies, protein. OK, you're going to bring starches. Everybody will, because you're like, oh, what's easy to bring? Some snacks, some bread, some you know, pasta or whatever. Some vegetables, I'll throw them in there. Mm, I don't know, meat's kind of hard to keep cool. OK, I was in a camp that neglected protein. <laughs> I nearly killed myself after three days and had to beg for tacos from next door. So don't forget your protein. It's really important out there to have a completely balanced diet. Um, meat is actually one of the easiest things to cook out there because you don't have to really season it that much for it to taste good. If you're a vegetarian, I'll talk about some other things you can do. But if you're not, bring meat. Trust me, you're going to want it. OK. So what we're talking about here is how to make this easy on you, OK? Um, you want to be able to enjoy the experience of Burning Man. So um, it, you know, if you really love to cook, that's one thing. Um, but if you want to free yourself up so you can do everything else, we're going to talk about how to do that. OK. So there's four ways. Um, one, bring things that don't need to pr be prepared or are really easily prepared. Two, um, remember to bring things on your arrival date that are fresh and ready to go so you can enjoy them that day. Subsequent days, other, as people come in, they can bring them. Um, things that are prepared in advance and reheated on the playa. And then, of course, there's real cooking. So I'm going to go through these one by one. OK, no hassle foods. So we're not the first people to discover living in the desert. It's been done for quite a while. So um, <laughs> I kind of thought of that and think, well, what do people who live in the desert eat? Um, They've probably figured this out before. So I have pictures of some things. Prickly pears, they grow on cacti. Um, they will stay well out at room temperature. Dates, they, those grow in the desert. Um, preserved items like olives, pickles, all kinds of pickled vegetables. Um, preserved meats like salami, beef jerky, that sort of thing. And um, flatbreads. Um, flatbreads survive better than kind of your fresh, fluffy breads. So also hard breads like. Um, you know, pumpernickel or German rye or things like that. OK? Um, so things, bring a lot, a lot of things that are ready to eat. Um, these are all things that don't require any cooling at all. So if you don't really have a, an advanced camp, like with the whole big kitchen and everything, um, you, can, you can live on this kind of stuff. Um, sturdy fruits and vegetables, like potatoes, onions, um, and even a lot of fruit really can, can go at room temperature. Um, and then there's also things, dry good. Um, is, it, is it unreasonable to, if you're only going for part of the time, think that you can survive solely on power bars, salami, and OK, so she asked if, <laughs> if you're going for a short period of time, can you survive on this stuff alone? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, really think it out and make sure you're going to have enough for the whole time. But I would stress, if you're going to do that, the preserved meats and the pickled vegetables so that you get your your vegetable matter and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else did I miss? Oh, uh, just to note, uh, we provided details for all of these things. They're all in the handout. In the handout, yeah. yeah. OK, so 
Um, other things that are no hassle, like things that maybe need to be in your cooler, like um, hummus or salsa or cheese, um, yogurt, those are all ready to eat, but you have to keep them cool, OK? Um, yeah, so there's more information in, um, in the packet. Don't forget your staples. Don't forget your drinks, obviously water. But there's the Hansen smoothies or other kind of canned juice drinks or box juices. Um, they also package milk in boxes, non-perishable milk, um, even in little ones. So you can have a serving at a time, throw a couple in your cooler in the morning. You know, whenever you need it that later that day or the next day, you have cold milk. Um, and in the packet, I, I um, actually, the question you asked, think you can't have a satisfying meal with only these items? Guess again. Um, here you go. Sliced cured meats with pickles, olives, mustard, hummus, and flatbread, served with mint tea. Cheese and crackers with honey, dried and fresh fruit, dates, nuts. Couscous with tomatoes, beans, lemon juice, and a side of yogurt. Avocado, corn, tomato, bean, onion salad with lemon juice and olive oil, with a side of chips and salsa. Slow roasted onions and potatoes. Those are easy if you have a grill. Wrap them up in foil, throw them in there, slow cook them. Yummy. Or you can even just find a burn pit out on the playa somewhere and you know, throw your onions in there. Um, hot oatmeal and other cereal with uh, bananas, nuts, dried fruit, honey. Those are all nutrient-dense meals that you can have. Okay, um, bringing it in. Fresh foods don't last long, but they're appreciated. So on your first day, bring a burrito with you that you stuck, got you know, in Reno or something like that, um, or sandwiches, or something that you, will last until you're ready for dinner that night. Um, you will not be ready with your kitchen. And even if you're bringing one, you won't be ready with it that night. Okay. And then um, say you get there on Sunday, but you have friends coming on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or maybe even Thursday. Um, remind them to bring you some fresh food. <laughs> um, it's all appreciated. It's easy for them. It's taken care of. Um, assign meals. Don't just suggest. So if, if you're part of a community at Burning Man and you're not just taking care of your own personal food, how many people is this true of for, for this coming Burning Man? You're in a community. OK. Um, it's really important. People are depending on you, and you're depending on them to get your nutrients. So like I, I gave you, the, my camp um, kind of forgot about protein because we all assigned you know, different people to different days, but we didn't really check on what those people were cooking. And three of them chose pasta with sauce. And that's it. <laughs> so really um, assign the meals. Make sure that they're nutritionally balanced. Um, make sure you're covered, OK? Um, and if you're unsure about your group, bring enough for yourself, too, just to take care of yourself. Um, prepare before and reheat. This is a really easy way to have a good, satisfying meal. Um, do everything you can at home. So either you know, in the weeks leading to Burning Man, make some extra food when you cook at home, um, or have a cooking for Burning Man party with your friends, your campmates beforehand. Prepare a bunch of stuff that um, you know, keeps well, and then freeze it. Um, you can cool it, and then if you have access to a cryovac machine, that works wonders or just Ziploc bags, you know, double it up, or even Tupperware. It will defrost quite easily on the playa. And then you heat it up in a pot, you're good to go. Um, one thing one of the people in my camp did last year that I thought was awesome was they ordered Indian takeout and froze that. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> um, so you know, if you don't even have time to cook, order takeout. So, um, and then pre-cuts that there on the left. That, that's a you know, restaurant set up for pre-cut for, you know, it's called mise en place with everything, everything in its place um, beforehand. So that will um, ease your time on the playa of preparation. But some things there might be more perishable. So if you're going to pre-cut things, make sure you pack it really well and cool it properly and all the other things you need to do to it. Um, but if you're going to do that, it's good to bring things that are prepared for you. Um, the real deal. OK. So you want to go to Burning Man and have a gourmet meal. Um, that was my idea my second year. <laughs> I spent the entire time cooking. And I had, I had a lot of fun, but I didn't want to do it ever again. <laughs> um, but uh, if you're going to do it, and it's really appreciated if you do, you know, maybe even just one day you're there, or you, it's something you do for your camp or for your community, you just want to spend one day going all out, prepare, OK? Make sure you have your ingredients, your equipment, your balanced nutrition, and the time to do it and the labor to do it. Okay, um, you know, 
don't, don't try to do it all yourself if it's a hard job. Make sure you have people who are going to help you um, prep everything you can in advance, package and organize. Um, if you're not totally sure about what you're doing, bring some recipes, spread out the work. Um, in the packet, I have some menu ideas. They're basically um, the things I made that year that I cooked all weekend. <laughs> um, there's plenty of other things you can do, though. I've seen all sorts of stuff happen there. Or breakfast is also pretty easy. You know, pancake breakfast, bacon. Bacon on the pie is delicious. Um, yeah, so just some things I don't recommend. Pasta, well, it's tempting because it's so easy. It produces a lot of wastewater. So you know, do it if you want to, but just think about the fact that you're going to be producing a lot of wastewater and fish. Um, you know, fish really smells bad if it goes bad. You can do it. You can bring fish um, if you do wrap it really well in several layers of plastic, or better yet, cryovac it, and um, cook it quickly on the first night or so. Um, don't recommend sushi on the playa. People like to do it. Um, even if it's good, it kind of doesn't taste good in the hot weather. So <laughs> um, you know, just think about those things. Think about, am I going to want to eat this when I'm sitting there really, really hot? And you know, is there going to be a lot of stuff I have to throw away afterwards? So get cooking. So that's all. <laughs> so uh, if any of you have any questions, uh, you could go back to the microphone over there. We'll do our best answer. And uh, we'll open floor, too, if someone else has a better answer. Anyway. I have a really random question. I don't know if this is working or not. But um, one of the uh, people I'm camping with wants to actually like try and bake goods. And so I'm wondering if either of you have had any experiences like trying to bake stuff on the playa. Bake? Yeah. Wow. Uh, certain baked goods <laughs> keep better than others. Uh, you mean bake on the playa or bring baked goods to the playa? OK. Actually, I have a good answer for you. Remember that question about what do people who live in the desert eat? Flatbread on a hot stone. Um, it's, search for it. It's really easy. I've made it in like, as like a little you know, scout kind of lesson. It's you know, flour, water, salt on a hot, flat stone um, pita bread. Oh, uh, just to yeah. provide details, uh, for any sort of baked goods, the rule of thumb is the more moist it is, the less long it's going to last. So drier cookies, like biscotti, are going to last you the whole week. Uh, chewy cookies, a few days. Yeah. Um, at the microphone? I think he wants to add something. Oh, OK, yeah. Oh, um, uh, skillet breads and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, skillet cornbread. There you go. Um, also dumplings. Okay. Excellent. Uh, he suggested, I'm just repeating the question to get it on camera. Uh, he suggested skillet breads, like cornbread in the cast iron skillet, and dumplings to be dumped in stew. Both excellent ideas. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, ice, is the only, uh, ice and coffee is the only thing that's sold around. Um, can you use dry ice, or is that? Yeah, um, I've done that before, where I, I um, before I leave, pack a little bit of dry ice in every cooler, and it keeps your ice lasting longer. But it actually doesn't last that long once you get there. So um, if you are going to use it, you know, bigger pieces of it, be careful. Um, you can, but it, they don't sell dry ice there. Do you have any, anything to add? No. No. Uh, another thing, uh, I don't know much about okay. uh, the whole event. So what is an evaporation pool? <laughs> uh, it's basically a, a good way to get rid of your water without dumping it directly on the playa. Uh, I'll just skip back to the, uh, basically you lay out a large sheet of plastic, uh, put up a number of two by fours to provide an edge to it. Ah, there we go. So you just, it, the water spreads out and it's so hot and dry there that it pretty much goes pretty fast. Uh, if you have a lot of water, it will eventually build up and you have to stop using it. But otherwise it's a good deal. Uh, we actually had a little innovation in which we added uh, these little racks and towels here. That just uh, increases, uh, decreases the evaporation time. Like little wicks. Actually, I wanted to add one thing about um, another way to make your kitchen. There's the carport. Um, what I've done in years past, if you're going with a big camp um, and you bring a truck, uh, we had a big you know, eight-wheeler or something like that. Um, we, once we unpacked the truck with all our stuff, we turned our truck into the kitchen. It was really good. It was kind of like a galley kitchen on a submarine or something like that. Um, yeah, so yeah. like if you imagined inside that truck, 
you know, we set up everything in there. That way, you know, if there is a windstorm or you're cold or whatever, you can just shut the door, make sure you have lighting in there. But um, it's really, really the best protected area that you can have. It's out of the sun. We kept all our coolers in the back of the truck um, or water in the back of the truck and then just had tables against the wall with our heating elements and our um, milk crate pantry and that sort of thing. Question? So um, I'm sorry, I, I missed the first part of your talk. I, I was wondering if you have any experience using solar ovens or sun ovens in the desert. You know, yeah. I haven't uh, had experience using them, but I've uh, looked into them. They're great for things that you want to just heat up. If you want to bake something to a specific temperature, they're actually a very bad idea. Because lots of baking is dependent on a specific temperature, and you can't really control that. But again, they're great if you just have something frozen you want to get to hotness. There is um, a camp uh, called the Alternative Energy Camp at Burning Man every year, so they could probably help you if you ask them there. There's uh, plenty of other camps who are using alternative energy as well. So, um, yeah, for those of you who haven't been before, one of the most striking things about Burning Man is for a city with no um, public works like electricity, the light at night will really amaze you. It's like crazier than Las Vegas, neon lights everywhere. So. You know, there are ways. <laughs> oh, also about yeah. the solar ovens. Uh, there's a much cheaper solution to the solar oven instead of buying one. It's uh, called your dashboard. <laughs> it gets hot in your car. Yeah, there's a cookbook out there, dashboard cooking, you know, so there is. <laughs> oh. Yeah? You, sir? Um, I was curious about how, to, how long meat keeps in a cooler, how to watch out for it spoiling, or, you know, by the end of the week, making sure you don't poison yourself. Um, OK. Uh, basically, just, just like you would in your refrigerator, as long as you keep, the, keep it um, in the right environment. So a couple things. Well, you know, the ice is going to melt eventually, so, and it's not going to be contained in a bag if you try and put it in a bag. So keep your food raised off the bottom of the cooler, especially uh, meat. If it is at the bottom with the, the water, it's, it's going to leak into the plastic somehow and make it soggy, unless you cryovac it, which is really the best thing. But raising it up somehow, putting, putting something down at the bottom, that, like a little piece of Tupperware or something, that you can raise it up to the level of the melted ice. Better yet, to really um, empty the water every day and to make sure it's packed with new ice. Um, probably every, you could get away with every other day, um, but even every day if you're particularly concerned about the meat. And would, like, a, if you bought, say, a steak at the beginning of the week, would it be safe by the end of the week? I'm just not sure what the usual keep time is. Or... Um, it's probably, raw meats are probably not going to last uh, till the seven days. Uh, one thing to especially watch out for is um, pork. That will spoil, uh, unless it's like a cured salami or whatever. Uh, pork spoils faster than beef. And uh, chicken somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um, but you, it, sh it should be OK for you know, most of the week if you really oh, if you treat it properly. And I keep talking about cryovacking, but um, that's going to make, make it last even longer. Um, you can also freeze it before you leave, so it goes into your cooler frozen. Um, takes a longer time to defrost and then, you know, stays even longer. But uh, always, you know, give your meat a good sniff before you start prepping yeah. it. Does anybody else have experience and, and want to add to that? No? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes, sir, did you have a question? Well, I was just, uh, I think from the solar heating, you can't really um, boil water, so yeah, the saying, he's saying the solar ovens don't get hot enough to boil water. So again, only good for reheating things, not uh, disinfecting. Uh, does anybody else have a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm not a relatively healthy person, I guess, in the <laughs> sense of eating. What happens if somebody gets really sick at the event? Um, there is medical staff on site. Um, they're all volunteer, so um, when you get there, make sure you look at your map and find out where the medical staff is, and um, they will take care of you. There's first aid. If it's serious, they'll, they'll ship you out. Um, so yeah, there is medical staff there, but I would recommend not getting sick. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. 
so there, she just said there's going to be a, a Q&A session for Google burners to get together sometime next week. Yeah? Right. Yeah, so they were saying um, do bring your own first aid because the first aid they have there isn't, it's not like a hospital. They, they're just there to evaluate you if you're going to be able to you know, stay or go to the hospital um, off-site. So definitely bring your own first aid. Don't forget that. Um, your prescriptions, um, enough to last you, and an extra, keep them in two places, things like that. It's good to go with a doctor, too. We, mm -hmm. we like to do that. <laughs> it's even better to camp with the doctor. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. We have handouts at the front. If we run out, just um, let us know. And thank, thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs>